Hello. Uh, next, we are going to talk about the IV characteristic of the bipolar junction transistor. And I'm going to be talking about the MPN as an example from now on. Um, and so the voltage current characteristic. is simply a graphical representation of um, the voltage across a device versus the current through a device. And we typically like to know the voltage current characteristic or relationship for all types of electrical devices. Um, in the case of resistors or capacitors or inductors, it's a little bit easier because they are two terminal devices. And so there is only one possible voltage and one possible current to talk about. In the case of transistors though, uh, there are three terminals, and so there are different currents, there are different voltages, and so it becomes a little bit more complex. But normally when we talk about the current voltage characteristic, we're talking about the output current and the output voltage, uh, which means the collector current and the collector emitter voltage for the MPN transistor. Um, of course, there is also the input IV characteristic, which we should all be familiar with. Again, this is for the MPN transistor. And so we can plot the input characteristic will be the collector current versus the input voltage, which is um, the base to emitter voltage. And by now we should know that, you know, because we're talking about a forward bias diode or a forward bias pin junction, um, in the case of the base emitter junction, there is a, um, an exponential relationship between the current flowing through the junction and the voltage across the junction. Now, that will refer to the emitter current versus the base emitter voltage. But because we have made the approximation that the collector current, again, we're going to approximate it as being equal to the emitter current, uh, we can have a similar type of relationship for the collector current versus the... Um, oh. That was a strange exponential. Versus the base emitter voltage. We know that the uh, base emitter junction, like any pin junction that's made out of silicon, uh, will turn on at approximately 0.7 volts. And we can see that once it is turned on, it's going to remain approximately the same value of 0.7 volts for large variations in the collector current. And so for normal operation, even, we have, even though we have variation of the collector current, we're going to approximate that a base emitter voltage has been equal to about 0.7 volts, 0.6.7. Now, the IV characteristic that we care most about is um, the variation of collector current versus collector to emitter voltage, or IC versus VCE. And again, we're going to, uh, to see different shapes, um, and instead of just a single curve, we're going to see a collection of curves. And that's just because a transistor is, uh, for one thing, a nonlinear device, um, and so there, are, you know, a three-terminal device, and so there are different possible variations. So it's going to be a family of of IV curves as opposed to a single IV curve as we may be accustomed to. Uh, the simplest condition for the transistor is when it is in cutoff, meaning the uh, base emitter voltage does not reach 0.7 volts, meaning the base emitter junction is reverse biased. We say the transistor is off or in the cutoff region. Um, so first region we're going to say is VBE is less than 0.7 volts. The current through the transistor is equal to zero, and we say we are in cutoff. Um, and we put that in orange here. This is going to be a current of zero for any value of VCE. It's a simple curve. I'm going to write here, um, perhaps out here. This corresponds to VBE less than 0.7 volts, IV equals zero, cutoff. Uh, the next step is we turn on the transistor. And by turn on, I mean we apply a voltage of about 0.7 volts across the base emitter junction. Um, and once we have the transistor turned on, we're going to go ahead and start increasing VCE from zero. And we know that when VCE is still at zero, even though the base emitter uh, junction is turned on, meaning there is 
uh, flow of electrons from the emitter into the base, um, the electric field from the collector is not strong enough to start collecting um, a significant number of electrons into the collector. And so um, the CE is still small, less than 0.3 volts. And so we say the transistor is in saturation, meaning as we go increasing VCE, um, the electric field becomes stronger and stronger. And so more and more electrons are collected into the collector. And we represent that with uh, more or less linear relationship. Let's do that in red. As you see, the collector current initially goes increasing with collector to emitter voltage. Now, after we reach that saturation voltage, that 0.3 volts, the electric field at that point is strong enough that most of the electrons get collected by the collector. And so uh, the current will not keep increasing with further increases in the collector to emitter voltage. And so at some point it's going to flatten out. All right, something like this. You can say this will be, you know, one value of IB, this will be IB2, IB3. Uh, important thing to understand is that this is the direction of increasing IB. And so as we increase the value of the base current, we can see that the collector current goes increasing. But for any given value of base current, uh, we will have a region. I should do that in a different color. Um, VCE saturation, which again we see is approximately 0.3 volts. And so for the region where um, the VCE voltage is lower than the saturation voltage, uh, we're going to have some relationship, uh, direct relationship between collector current and collector emitter voltage. We call that the saturation region. We represent that. I'm saying IC is proportional to VCE. Saturation region. And once that um, VCE increases past the saturation voltage, we can see that now the current, I'll put something that's a little bit more visible, uh, now the value of the current is independent of VCE, meaning it's just a constant value for any value of IB, a constant value regardless of um, the value of VCE. We call this the linear region of operation. Linear active region, forward active region, those are all equivalent terms. And so we have here that IC is equal to beta times IB, meaning independent of VCE, and this is the linear active region. Now, there are all these regions, and uh, it's we've been focusing most of our attention into the linear active region, and there is a reason for that. That's the region of operation that we're going to use when we are building and designing amplifiers, when we're using the transistor as an amplifier device. Um, the cutoff and saturation regions also have their utility, and typically, you know, roughly speaking, in general terms, these are going to be regions that are used more for uh, switching or digital applications. You will be, you will have a transistor switching between cutoff and saturation, uh, whereas the linear active region is the region that we're going to uh, put the transistor in when we're dealing with amplification type of applications. There are. Um, Perhaps two things that we should note um, when we're talking about transistors and, and about this curve. Um, and one of them is that even though it appears here the collector current is 
completely independent of the um, collector emitter voltage after VC um, is past the 0.3 volts. Uh, there are certain absolute maximum ratings and certain limitations of actual transistors that we need to keep in mind. And so we can't just keep increasing the collector to emitter voltage indefinitely, for example. Um, so a couple of things to know is, uh, first of all, collector breakdown. which is an effect that will occur um, if the uh, VCE voltage exceeds some maximum, which is going to be specified in the data sheet uh, for a generic general purpose BJT transistor and PN transistor, we will have VCE max or VCE breakdown being approximately equal to 40 volts. And if we exceed that, then we will go into collection, collector junction breakdown. Um, another thing to keep in mind is about uh, maximum power rating. And so, again, when we're looking at the curve, uh, the IV characteristic or the IV curve, you, we see VCE, we see IC, and, uh, and we may be inclined to extrapolate and think that things can just keep going um, in the linear active region being constant ad infinitum. Uh, but in reality, we also have limitations regarding power dissipation in the transistor. Again, we said in the linear um, active region, we have power dissipation in the transistor as being approximately equal to IC times VCE. Now, what's going to happen is as we increase the collector current, uh, the temperature in the in the junction is going to start increasing. If you look at the data sheet for a transistor, there is a maximum junction temperature. Um, and so, so as I see increases, the junction temperature increases. For a normal transistor, the junction temperature um, should not exceed around 150 degrees C. And so it's always useful to check the maximum power dissipation and see what's the maximum value of IC times VCE to make sure that, um, that we don't break our transistor. In the case of a generic purpose transistor, uh, let's see, small signal. Transistors typically that PT is going to be less than one watt. If we are talking about a power transistor, it's typically going to be larger than one watt. So just some limitations to keep in mind. Uh, there is a data sheet for an MPN and a PMP transistor on the website, and I will encourage you to, um, as we go through this uh, review of transistors and also through the new material. Take a look at the data sheets, and as we uh, go talking about new characteristics and new parameters, make sure that you're able to identify them in the data sheet um, and make sure that the values make sense um, with what you have understood from the lectures. Thank you.